Testing. Testing. Okay, so I think sound works. Of course, we have to create a new Hangout link. So give me one second to disperse this. Uh, there's no one listening right now, but this is for the... Um, for the recording that will come up later. There we go. Okay, I think I got all the groups. I'm just going to wait for a few people to trickle in. Sorry about that, guys. So I have to reload all the questions and wait for some people to trickle in. Uh, while this is happening, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but for some reason the last Hangout wasn't picking up any sound. Uh, let's see. I think I'm starting to get people... Coming in. Yes, okay, sweet. So, questions go on the Q&A. Um, I'm going to repeat everything that I said in the last, uh, last Google Hangout. 
um, since sound wasn't going through. So this is the second week that we are trying uh, a little bit of a new format here. Um, we combine all the groups so that uh, there is more content and more questions. I don't know if that's actually been the case, but hopefully um, people are going to contribute more. So uh, in that spirit, please ask questions in the Q&A. Um, more is better. Uh, so what we're going to talk about in these groups, since everyone is on a little bit of a different timeline, instead of me recapping the material, um, which is not really the best use of time because uh, you guys should be reading it anyway, I'm going to answer questions and also go through a few themes that I'm seeing in, um, in the various groups. Uh, so hopefully this works out better. I think it's, it's a, a better use of both of our time. Um, and it should lead to more productive hangouts. Um, if it doesn't, well, we'll figure out how to improve this process. Um, so with that being said, what I one of the things I wanted to, to talk about, and I, I want to make sure that this doesn't um, take on a sort of negative note, uh, but you know, in, in the beginning I talked about this contract that I have as a coach and, and you have as a client. Right? On one hand, I promise never to to judge you um, for your actions in the sense that I'm not going to look down on you if you if you s slip up, right? As long as you tell me and you communicate this, we're going to examine things objectively and without judgment. Um, on the client end, uh, you know, the one thing that I really need from everyone is, is to communicate these things to me because I can't help you unless you... Um, you communicate, you know, where your issues are, right? So you should either be hitting your macros, or if you're not hitting your macros, you should be telling me why you're not hitting your macros so that we can go back and forth. Um, so I want to make sure that, you know, everyone is, is very deep into the program right now, but I want to make sure that everyone is reminded about this, right? Because if something isn't working for you and you're not hitting your macros, right, um, you can't say that the, the program isn't, isn't working. Um, Instead, what I'll need from you is to communicate why you're not hitting your macros so that we can either change your macros and give you something that is easier to adhere to with regards to your lifestyle, um, or instead of that, we can examine exactly why you're not hitting, uh, hitting said macros, right? And, and think about different thought patterns, um, figure out ways to you know dip into instead of fitness per se, but maybe some lifestyle design, uh, with regards to changing our habits and um, better fit macros and fitness around your life instead of vice versa, if that makes sense. So please do remember this uh, as, as part of this kind of two-way relationship, right? Um, otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm hamstrung as a coach um, because there's only so much I can do um, if somebody isn't hitting their, their recommended amounts. Um, and again, if you're not, there's nothing to be ashamed about. But I do need to know why, uh, and I do need to know exactly what's happening. Um, and it seems like this this is like a little bit of a, a theme this week with, with a lot of groups. Um, the second thing is that, and this is something I'm, I'm learning more and more as a coach because I'm getting a lot more volume. Um, you know, at the start of the program, everyone was super motivated. And this makes sense because we talk about the positive feedback loop and the fact that I want everyone to start seeing results ASAP so that the uh, experience this sort of self-motivation um, that occurs, this, this motivation engine. Well, after a few weeks, you're still going to see results uh, every single week in some manner, but those results are going to slow down. And at the beginning, it's very easy to get addicted to results, right? It's easy to look for that PR every single week or look for that one to three pounds of weight loss um, every single week. And inevitably that slows down. Um, there are physiological reasons that slows down. Uh, your weight is going to plateau. Um, you're not going to be able to hit PRs as quickly uh, as you did at the start just because your body is um, now in a, a more trained state, right? It's very easy to make progress when you're untrained, going from untrained to trained. But after you are, you know, technically a, a trained uh, individual, week to week progress isn't as isn't as um, isn't as easy. So it can actually get very demotivating if you're used to that type of progress. Um, so 
there are a few things that you should be you should be doing if you start to feel uh, demotivated because progress is slowing down. Right. The first is look for progress uh, and create progress wherever you can. Right. So if you find that uh, your weight isn't going down every single week, and let's say adherence is not as good um, every single week, what you should be doing is looking for ways to improve adherence and tracking adherence, um, such that you know, let's say my adherence is a six last week and a five this week. Well, if weight isn't going down and measurements aren't going down, then I want to improve adherence from week to week, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm looking for other sort of smaller wins that will carry me over. Um, similar thing with PRs. If I'm not PRing on the top set on every single exercise, then, um, you know, that's that's okay because that's, that's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for PRs on back off sets instead. Uh, so maybe the second set or the third set. I will try to beat um, the second or the third set last week with regards to reps and weight. That will get me these these small wins. I mean, those will eventually carry over into your top set. Now, inevitably, you're not going to see as strong of results as you did in the start, right? Even if we do this exercise of trying to improve on everything that we can and looking for um, smaller wins, you're still not going to get that same dopamine hit as you did in the beginning when you were losing a lot of weight, when you were hitting PRs and everything. So at that point, you know, everyone's read the article on the marshmallow test. Um, and here's where most people fail. The temptation is to push harder, right? To cut your calories harder, to diet harder, to go to the gym more. And this is where most people fail because Exercise is something that has very diminishing returns. Um, going to the gym four times a week won't really improve your results over going three times a week if you were in a caloric deficit. Uh, just because your body is not in um, the appropriate state to put on muscle or to uh, tolerate a lot of physical activity. You know, there's, there's a fixed amount, um, and that amount is lower than if you were not in a caloric deficit. And so, at this point, it becomes really important to fall in love with the process of fitness. Learn to love lifting. Um, focus on being in the moment and seeing the weight go up and down and try to focus on, on the, the feeling of um, gratification after knowing that you completed the workout. So, go from being more results-oriented to process-oriented. The way to accomplish that is by, ironically, not focusing on fitness at all. So put fitness in the background as much as you can. Try to automate all of your activities, go to the gym at the same time every day, turn it into a habit, and instead focus on a hobby, something else. Something so that your mind isn't so much focused on fitness. If you do that, then ironically, Fitness is not going to be at the forefront of your mind all the time. It becomes easier to uh, focus on or to, to fall in love with the process. I suggest that you read the uh, the Marshmallow Test article again. If you ever start feeling like, ah, things are, are kind of slow, things are kind of slowing down, and you're obsessing over fitness too much as a result, and you're tempted to push harder. Uh, one of the most common questions I get is, well, you know, if I'm seeing slower results and I'm going to the gym three times a week, why not go to the gym four or five times a week? Uh, which isn't as appropriate for, it depends on the individual. There are actually some people I'm asking to go to the gym a little bit more. Um, those tend to be individuals who um, are sticking to their diet 100%, but just for whatever reason have a lower maintenance uh, set of calories. But that's only really one to three people. One, two, Three people in, in all of the groups. Um, everyone else should not be pushing hard, and they should be reading that Marshmallow Test article and really absorbing the, the ethos of that, and that is making sure that fitness is not in the forefront of your life, but instead something that is on the side. 
And doing that, ironically, is how you will kind of get past these these mental plateaus where you start feeling listless. Because, you know, this is a process that takes a lot of time. And the time is going to pass anyway, regardless. So if your weight loss process is, you know, if the entire journey is going to, to last a year, two years, doing it appropriately and not crash dieting, instead losing, you know, one to two pounds a week with plateaus built in here and there, then that time would have passed anyway. So make sure that you don't push too hard and you know that's that's a pitfall that a lot of people um, run into and instead that you focus on putting fitness in in the background. Let me go through some of the questions that I've had uh, in the groups just so Okay, so another thing that has been happening to a few people, falling off the wagon, especially after going on vacation, there have been three people across all of my groups in the last two weeks that have been superstars with regards to adherence. They go on vacation, they even plan to fail, and then they come back from vacation and it's they they feel like they need to keep the party going, right? Uh, and if if you're one of these people, then then you know who you are because we've chatted at length. And um, this is something that's that's absolutely common, right? I think that everyone is going to run into this at some point. Um, this feeling or this need to keep the party going when you take a break. Now. How do you fix this, right? The first thing is when you come back from vacation, um, or going on vacation, you know, well, no, actually, let me back up even more. When you diet, no matter how much you try to incorporate flexible eating, if it fits your macros, um, try to incorporate a large variety of food, you are going to have a restricted or deprived mindset. To some degree, right? There's a, a spectrum of, of how deprived you feel. And on a program like this, you'll probably feel, you'll definitely feel less deprived than 99% of other programs. But just because you're in a caloric deficit and you can't eat everything that you want to, there's going to be some deprivation that's there. When you go on vacation or you take a break, even if you plan to fail, you experience a rebound in the other way. Suddenly, there is no deprivation at all. And you can eat all the things to a degree. The larger that jump, right, um, the larger the jump from depriva deprivation to non-deprivation, eating all the things, the more of a, a rebound mentality you're going to face, right? Um, and so it's, it's important to try to feel uh, as little deprivation on this diet as possible, right? And also when you go on vacation or, or something else, um, even if you plan to fail, you know, put some smart restrictions, right? You're not going to binge eat every day so that this, this jump is as, as low as possible. Well, when you finish your vacation or your break, there's going to be feelings of guilt, right? And this is why self-compassion is important. Um, again, the, the feeling of guilt is going to be something that's on a spectrum. Some people are going to feel a lot more, some people are going to feel a lot less. Um, but the more guilt you feel, um, and, and the bigger this kind of jump from your previous uh, eating habits to what you do on vacation, the harder it will be to get back on the horse. And so what do we do after that? And this is important because everyone is going to face this. The first thing is show yourself some self-compassion, right? Um, actually, don't step on a scale the day that you come back from vacation because it's going to possibly lead to a 5 to 10 pound weight gain, uh, not in fat, but just from excess food intake and glycogen, right? So don't step on the scale until a full week of coming back. Like, really, do not step on the scale, no matter how tempted you are, um, especially if you are the person who knows that you're emotionally attached to that scale. That number is just going to upset you. So... Um, yes, number one, don't step on the scale. 
uh, and show yourself some self-compassion, right? You intentionally broke from your diet. What you did was okay, even if you, you know, threw everything into the wind and ate all the things on vacation. It was still an intentional break, right? Um, what really, really catches people is keeping the party going. What, what trips people up is this keeping the party going instead of hopping back on your diet. So hopping back on your diet, you'll undo everything that you did, even if you went like hog ass wild on vacation, uh, in the span of two to three weeks. But if you keep the party going, then you potentially run the risk of yeah. Uh, you potentially run the risk of um. Sorry, I get distracted by the questions on the side. Super ADD. Let me actually cover these up. Uh, until we get to questions. Um, yeah, by keeping the party going, you run the risk of undoing further progress, when really you can't undo that much with two to three weeks. And that's that's actually what trips most people up. Um, the other thing that you should do is, if you have trouble getting back on the horse, uh, create a totem, right? We talk about this with binge eating. Well, this also applies to um, coming back on vacation, right? So... When you are in a rational state of mind, you know, when you don't feel the need to, I guess, binge eat, um, and you know that you are sabotaging yourself, write down all of the triggers that, all the triggers and all the messages that your brain is telling you um, to keep this party going, right? So you know one of the triggers is the fact that you just came back from vacation. Um, you can write down, let's say, this is in the morning before breakfast, uh, let's say that that's when you start rationalizing, oh, I should go out and get some, some pancakes because I'm still kind of on vacation. Uh, and then write down all the messages that your brain is telling you. Um, so you're going to shift from irrational to rational states back and forth. Uh, so do this when you're in a rational state. When you are in this irrational state and your brain is sending you these messages telling you to extend your vacation and keep the party going, then look at your totem. Right. Write a message to yourself when you're in a rational state um, about how you experience these um, rationalizations that your brain sends you to keep this party going, uh, and how you always feel bad afterwards. Right. Uh, so write yourself a message and look at this totem after, uh, or look at this totem whenever you see those triggers going off. Um, but do know that this is a very natural thing to do. And this is one of the things that trips people up uh, when they are on, um, you know, when they're deep into their diets. Um, so yeah, those are the two things, I guess, that, you know, I would say over over the years, uh, and especially looking at the group recently, it kind of corroborates this, that really send people off the rails um, when, when they're dieting. And you, just, you definitely don't want to fall into one of these traps. Uh, Chris says, I understand what you're saying about not pushing too hard. That said, I enjoy the workouts and I look forward to those mornings. My worst macro adherence days are those when I rest. Would it make any sense to add a fourth workout day? Um, let's, let's chat about this uh, in the group a little bit more because I have some follow-up questions. It's possible that your macro adherence is worse on rest days, not because of the workouts, but because um, because they're lower in carbohydrates, right? And maybe uh, macro adherence, for flexibility reasons, for you would be better on uh, days with higher carbohydrates. So one of the things we, we no, one of the things we might want to do is create the same macros for rest days or training days um, so that they both have higher carbohydrates. Uh, it could also be that if you work out in the morning, um, you get this dopamine hit, right? It's like, I did something right in the morning. Um, and so since I started my day off doing something right, uh, the rest of my day is going to be better about hitting macros, right? So it could be one of those two reasons. I would prefer not to add a fourth day. So if it's the latter reason, then we might want to add some sort of fasted cardio or um, interval training in the very start. Uh, but let's definitely chat about that in the group because it could be one of those one of those two things.
That's actually an excellent question. There are some people who um, could use an extra day, a fourth or a fifth day. Um, that is a very small percentage of the uh, the population, though. Um, one of the reasons that adding an extra day doesn't really help is, you know, in a caloric deficit, you are still most of you are still PRing, uh, which is insane, and that's only because you are not working out with a lot of volume and instead focusing on intensity-based workouts. Um, just because volume is something that you can't really tolerate a lot of when you are in a large caloric deficit. Alrighty, is that everything? Uh, last call for questions, please. And thanks for, looks like everyone uh, who was in the last room, or at least the same number of viewers, the last hangout found their way here. So thank you for... Great question. How do we deal with rest days when we're feeling raring to go and exercise? Um, on things like that, I would definitely, definitely don't, um, definitely do not go to the gym and, and do an intentional uh, strength training workout. But on those days, I would spend that extra energy um, doing something that's not exercise for the sake of caloric burn, right? Like if you want to go on a run those days and it doesn't exacerbate uh, binge eating tendencies, then definitely. You know, go on a run, go on a burst walk, go hiking, play sports. Um, it's okay to use that extra energy if you feel, um, you know, kind of, kind of like this pent up energy that needs to be released. It's okay to use that to do other things, right? As long as it's not um, something that is intentionally for the purposes of weight loss or something that's not um, strength training, uh, strength training based. What if we don't feel like eating, but there's still lots of macros to meet? I haven't been hungry at all by dinner, uh, dinner time, but still have macros to consume. Uh, go ahead and hit your macros anyway, as best as you can, right? Like if you're feeling nauseous, um, just get to as close as you can. Otherwise, um, it's important to be consistent on hitting your macros, um, especially if, you know, I talk about how people shouldn't be on a deficit all of the time, right? Um, you need periods of time that you're in a deficit in periods of time on maintenance or a surplus to recover your metabolism, right? Um, so if you're somebody who is in a deficit or has been in a deficit all the time, then it is important to, to meet your macros even if you're not feeling uh, not feeling as hungry just for this kind of metabolism healing to, to occur. Um, but if you're feeling nauseous or, or physically ill, you know, um, then proceed uh, with you know best judgment, uh, but if not, do try to to hit your macros as best as possible, um, even if it's a pain to you know, go and and measure extra extra food. Um, again, utilize fillers as best as you can, right? So if you have a lot of protein left but don't really feel hungry, make a protein shake, right? That's easy to to take down. Um, if you have carbohydrates left, um, you know there's lots of fun food that you can eat, uh, like low-fat ice cream to hit your carb macros, and if you have a lot of fat left, you know, add a tablespoon of olive oil to uh, one of your last meals uh, to fit those extra amounts. But that will help you hit your targets without really, um, you know, going over in satiety. When I started this program, I pretty much ceased all other extra training. I'd like to start doing yoga again because it's fun. Is that okay? It's kind of like strength training. Yes, after ceasing all other training, um, and I explicitly told you to if you're somebody who um, you know, might have fallen off the horse a lot with fitness, then I probably asked that you cease other training. But yes, once you're in the full swing of things, you can slowly start to add other things, although do run it by me. Yoga is something that should be fine on, on rest days as long as you have the time for it. Thanks for asking that. Great question.
Is there a point where it makes sense to switch from dumbbell to barbell bench? I know that dumbbells add in uh, more of a stability component. Manipulating the dumbbells is getting trickier now that I'm getting to 70 pounds per hand. Uh, great question, Dan. So when you get to a certain point on, on dumbbells, um, you actually have to master the technique of getting the dumbbell set up and into place. Um, so what you want to do is take the dumbbell. Uh, actually, this is probably a better angle. Sit it at the um, sit it at the top of your legs. Sorry, not the top of your legs, but close to your knees. So holding it like this, and then when you fall backwards, kick it up. Uh, it's a technique you're going to want to mess around with with lighter weights. Um, so try it with 30 pounds. And go through a few repetitions of that, right? Kick it up, go back, try it again. Kick it up, go back. Um, and then try it with, you know, 70 or 75 pounds um, once you're used to it. If you still find that that gives you issues, then yeah, it's fine to switch to, uh, to barbell um, in, in that case. Uh, as long as you're improving week over week, barbell is, is totally fine. But I do prefer dumbbells just for chest aesthetics purposes. If we're doing dumbbell bench press, uh, when do we get to use the barbell? Do we get to switch at 25 pounds for the third set? Uh, it would be nice to have a gold work towards to get to the bar. Uh, that's a good question. So if you're a woman, then you, I found that most women have problems at the 35 to 40 pound mark, where they can get to 35 pounds on, um, on dumbbells, but they can't make that jump to 40 pounds because for some reason it's it's just at this this weird, um, it's a, this weird like milestone. If you want to switch to barbells right now, and you can do barbells, that's actually fine. Um, switch now instead of waiting. Uh, but if you want to figure out when you should, you know, officially switch, I would say when you can do 35 pounds at the uh, top of your your reps. So at about 10 reps, 35 pounds is is a good. Um, good spot to switch to barbells if you were a woman. Been thinking of adding in new exercises to my routine. Is there a day that works better? Uh, chest day, leg day? Um, how do I know when to best insert exercises? So you shouldn't be inserting exercises um, unless I explicitly tell you. If you are um, interested in adding military presses, then you do get those at, as an option on week, uh, I believe, week 10. So, wait, week 10? I have to double check. I think it's either, it's either week 10 or week 14. Uh, but it's when I provide the more advanced routines. But please don't add anything uh, unless I explicitly say so. And there's a reason for this. All right, guys. Um, Looks like that is everything. Cool. Don't forget to submit your measurements. Remember, Saturday is the uh, is the deadline moving forward. Um, so please, please submit before Saturday evening. Um, and I can't wait to see everyone's progress this week. Thank you.